All right, we're well, live. Graham, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right. So, um, I mean, there's tons, there's tons I want to cover, but I thought we might start with your most recent race, which was the the World Championships in Manchester. Um, you finished fifth. I guess you were pretty happy with that at the time? I, I was happy with that. I was looking for top five. That wasn't my goal, top five. Because first time being in the Elite 15, I wasn't sure how like the layout was going to suit me and stuff like that. Even though my gym was like, similar to that sort of layout, but I wasn't sure how it was going to be. You know, it's like on race day when you're up against guys who are pushing things a bit harder. You don't know how things are going to pan out. How was the like the atmosphere and being in that environment and everything like that? Was that, that pretty cool? That was a good buzz. It was a good buzz. See, just to be like alongside that guys, uh, guys at that calibre, that was a good buzz. Yeah, 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 nice. Um, so that that performance, like it left you fifth, UK's fastest athlete. Um, you got a PB of fifty seven thirty five. Did you feel like you had a like? I mean, there was a lot of talk in the season. I've heard you talk about like essentially like your qualifying times were on fast courses, if you like. Did you feel like you had a point to prove going into that? I did. Like it was in Glasgow. I got the fifty seven fifty three. I think it was, and then I felt as if I had a point to prove before I like went into the elite fifteen race. Um, so that's why I went and done Hanover, and that's when I got the fifty seven thirty five. So I knew then after Hanover, I kind of knew I was like, hey, that's me. I'm f- I've kind of backed up what I've been saying, and then when I went there, I think I was I can't actually remember my time, but it was like fifty eight minutes, well, uh, fifty eight minutes thirty, I think, uh, in the worlds. Oh, in the so, worlds, it was yeah, fifty eight forty one. I've got written down there. Yeah. That's what it was. Um, so I was happy with that. Did it? Uh, I don't know how many podcasts you listen to, and, and, and so on. There's a few like American podcasts where, and I, I don't know. I think there was some disparaging remarks about some of the European athletes, including yourself, because like it was on a fast course and so on. Did do you feel like there's beef there with the Americans or not? Like people are always going to talk. It's like sometimes it's guys from the UK, or, uh, like Europe as well, though um, that will talk as well, but. Americans are always going to be loud, aren't they? That's the way they are. So you're going to be out there. Yeah, uh, yeah. Beef, I think everybody just needs to work hard and work on themselves and get better. Yeah, yeah. I think there's some beef, like, in the Elite 15 as a whole, but I kind of just focus on main stuff, try and get better. Yeah. From my perspective, I'm, I'm obviously outside the Elite 15. It feels like there's a there's like this American-Europe rivalry from the American side, but you know, maybe not so much from the Europe. Like we just, you know, not not that bothered about continent wise or anything like that. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I guess everyone's different. Um, do you have tactics for a race like that, or is it just go in and run your own race, or, or are you looking at what the other athletes are doing? Um, I, I did have tactics before it. Like my race changed uh, during the elite fifteen, so my tactics were usually um, go the first run quite pretty hard and then hit the ski hard. But as soon as I got to the ski, I don't know why, I don't know if like, maybe I just kind of shit myself a bit and like, I was like, right, I maybe need to pull back a bit here. Um, but I, I like, I went slower on the ski than I would, than I would usually. Um, and then usually I'm, like, I'll just kind of cruise through the burpees. But I was dying. I don't know if you've seen it, but I was like, nail step jump. I only do that if I'm actually needing proper recovery. And then after the burpees, I just felt, I felt as if I got that second wind and I felt as if I was starting to pick things up. And I got to the lunges and I was just firing through the lunges and that's when I kind of started making up ground again. Mm-hmm. Um, so usually I do have some form of like, um, plan in place, but it kind of went out the window, to be honest, during the Elite 15. It just depends who you're racing, who's pulling you in and what's happening in the race. But you should always try and stick with your plan as best as you can. But that's the first time it's kind of like went off to the side. Yeah, yeah. And um, this is that was essentially your first season in High Rocks, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. So, what's your is your background from bodybuilding? Bodybuilding. So, I've done a couple of like men's physique shows. That was my main thing, like just lifting weights, trying to get look better. That was the main thing for me. And how long? So, how long ago was that? How, how have you come from bodybuilding to being able to run? <laughs> so, was that is that like a very quick transition, or was it? Most it was probably probably over the course of maybe like a couple of years, like I was dabbling in it, like running, like I would do, like even though I was in like bodybuilding, I, I would always try like different things. Like I would like one year I was like, right, I'm just going to sign up to a marathon. I think I trained like for like eight weeks before it, 
Um, but nothing serious, maybe like two runs a week. And then that kind of put more stuff out of my head. So I done that. And then I was like, right, I'm going to train for something different. It was like a run, run half marathon, cycle half marathon, and then row a half marathon. And I just started doing, doing stuff like that throughout the year. And then eventually I seen High Rocks. And I was like, okay, I'm just going to sign up to that. And then I just started working on my run for a year properly, like programmed running, as opposed to just going, right, I'm just going to go and do a 10K. I'm just going to go and do a 5K. Nothing programmed, but that was that was my first year there. October last year, I started properly. Did you feel? Do you feel like you had a natural uh, ability at like the endurance sort of stuff when you when you initially went into it? Oh uh, nah, not really. To be honest, <laughs> um, nah, it feels like see because I'm like a heavier athlete as well. Like on the like, machines and stuff like that, I feel like I can hold like good paces just because I'm a heavier than the other athletes. So maybe need to feel a bit faster, um, but. As endurance side, I wouldn't say I'm like a proper endurance athlete. We um, I did, I did a, a survey before the the Elite Fifteen race where we talked about like some of the strength numbers and the running numbers and everything like that. And I think it's fair to say you're one of the stronger guys in that lineup. Can we can we talk about some of the, your, your your lifting numbers and running numbers where you feel you, you might be at right now? Uh -huh. Like from a from a strength side. Um, yeah, like I said, it looks like you're one of the stronger guys. What what are you squatting and deadlifting at the moment, if you are? Um, so I just tested my five rep max squat. I think it was two weeks ago, and that was 170 kilos. Okay. Deadlifts, I don't really test my deadlifts too often, to be fair. I probably should, but it's always going to be minimum 200 kilos for like two reps. That's like the bare minimum. If I don't get to 200 kilos for like two reps, then I know I'm not where my strength has to be. Um, bench. I'm not really fussed about bench, but I will always be able to like bench 110 kilos, mm. um, for two to five reps. Um, push. I can always push jerk like over 100 kilos. That's like one of my strongest. So maybe up to 110, 120 kilos for a push jerk. But strict press, maybe 70 kilos for two reps. I think. Okay. Nice. You um, and then like running wise. Is that where your primary focus is? Like what what you feel you most need to develop at the moment to compete more? Mm -hmm. so when I looked at the Elite 15, that's I, I placed 10 for my runs, like out of the 15 guys. So that's when I came back, I was like, this is this is what I need to kind of focus on. So I started implementing um, running four to five times a week uh, just after Manchester there. And that's been the focus really, just trying to bring up my running. What sort of mileage are you doing at the moment? It's... it's at least 60k at least 60k a week okay mm -hmm. would well, you know where you might be at for a, a 10k a half marathon anything like that um well i've not i tested my 10k like um it was malaga malaga um high rocks i tested my 10k as soon as i um, landed and it was like 36 minutes 50. well i'm hoping it would be like 35 that's, that's my next goal is to get like run about 35 minutes. I'd be happy with that considering the strength. Um, my 5k, I just done a 5k park run, which is quite hilly. Um, and I got that in 1733. That was just Saturday there. Okay. Um, so that was like a, just a park run, a local yeah. park run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. What about you, the, the ergs? Like, like, I don't know, 2k. Have you done a 2k on the run, on the ski lately? Um, 2k, I'm probably. Well, I could maybe like an average of a one four three pace on the maybe maybe a one four five at slowest for the ski and the rower I'm stronger on so I'd probably be able to hold like at one three eight to one four one for two k. Nice. I'd say. Okay. All right. Um. And you you sort of mentioned that you're working on your running. Is that put like how do you think about that in training? Have, have you put your 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 strength work into a more of a, a maintenance phase, or are you still like looking to develop strength at the same time, or or what? How are you approaching that? It's it's really only one session a week that's strength based, so I only squat like once a week, and like if I manage to have like an extra session, I'll maybe add it in, but it's not been like a proper focus. But I'll just usually go every Monday. It's going to be like um, bench, squat, pull ups, and um, that's. That's literally just the main focus for that. That's Monday, Monday session, then Tuesday it's like rocks and run. Then it'll be like more running. It's, that's still in the session I'll go for. Mm -hmm. Are you there. you programming yourself or you you've got a coach? I program it myself. I feel like I like I've not really met anybody else that can like structure the way I like it because I like to add in stuff like say like muscle ups, like kind of crossfit style training. 
mm-hmm. like around muscle ups, like I'll play a bit with handstands and stuff like that. I don't want to dabble in CrossFit, I just like the kind of training side of it. Um so that's why I like to kind of structure my own programming. So that's just it's just for like a fun aspect as opposed to you feeling it's it's good for high rocks. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I yeah. depends. Well, like the way I like to structure a workout is like um, let's say it's like a rocks and um, skill. So maybe I add in like a ski because it's a part of a rocks workout and I'll add in like farmer carries. And then for the remainder of the time, let's say it's like a four minute time cap, I've got like 200 meter ski, um, 40 meter farmer carries. Then I'll spend like the remainder of the time, max muscle ups, something like that. Just okay. to play up and you're still getting a, like the best of both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, obviously, it's like been a relatively short period of time since you've been been in high rocks or training for high rocks have you do you feel like you've changed anything with your approach like anything you were doing initially that, that wasn't working or anything you've introduced that you feel is working really well um well i feel like i've i've really just added in more running volume that's the main thing um but i feel like what what works well for me is like the batter style workouts so it could be like um, nine minutes on, one minute off, and you have like a set amount of volume to do. So it could be like five hundred meter run, so many wall balls, so much on the ski erg, and then back into run for the remainder of the nine minutes. And then you get one minute off, and it could be like a two part workout, and then you can just switch in between the two of them. So it's like ten minutes total. You could go three sets each part, mm-hmm. and I think that works quite well because, like, when I track my heart rate, my heart rate is always hitting like a red zone when I'm going through these sort of workouts. Okay. So, you, and, but you would, and you would keep something like that in throughout the throughout the year. Like we're in off season now, or just coming out of off season. You, you'd still do that off season. I would do that at least once a week, even if it's an off season, because it still gives you that like that kind of bump. And like, so when you go back to that proper high rocks in season training, you're not going to get like a fright, like a shock to the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Uh, the like obviously you're in the the elites fifteen and and so on. How how do you feel about the recent elite setup changes? Are you pretty happy with how that looks? It's still get pretty similar, like the part for like it's like four majors this time, but um like you still need to get a fast time, so it's still got to be fast athletes regardless. And um, plus, there's like so many high rocks, um, um, there's so many high rocks happening all over the like the world. Like everybody's kind of got a chance. Yeah. So it's fair game, really. Yeah. Do you feel like your time of fifty-seven thirty will will keep you in those majors? I don't know, but I'm going to go and test out Poland a week on Saturday anyway, just to see how my training's been. So I like I want to do one at the start of the season, and then because I've changed a few things in my training, so I'd like to go see how that is, and then if I need to go back to the drawing board after that, then I'll go back to the drawing board for later on the year. Okay. All right. Um. We had some uh, we had some DMs about this when I, I put up a post about like, drug testing in 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 high rocks. Um, and obviously, you've come from a bodybuilding background where where it's probably even more prevalent than you know. Um, I don't I don't really know what my question is here. To be honest with you, you, you like I know we've spoken offline, but you feel like it's quite an important thing for high rocks to introduce, don't you? Mm-hmm. I believe they should, like, especially if they want the sport to grow. I think like they, there's something they need to start bringing in like very, very soon, especially when there's prize money there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Do you feel like it's? I mean, obviously we're not going to name names, but do you feel? Do you feel like it's there's athletes using it at the moment? I don't know. I'd like to think that there's like nobody's using it. To be fair, um, because like. Most athletes are like close together. Obviously, Hunter was in, on his own level at the the games eh, at the Elite Fifteen, even in Manchester. But it doesn't mean to say he's been juicing. Like he's just it's not as if he was like miles above. But um, I don't think anybody in the Elite Fifteen is actually taking just right now. But I think just to keep it in terms of like a sport that's wanting to grow, I think like they need to bring it in. Even if it's just like a couple of times a year, I know it can be an expensive thing, but it just keeps it like legal, really, and yeah. it keeps it fair. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah. So I don't know how CrossFit gets away with it, really, like because you know guys in CrossFit are juicing one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I guess the first step is 
that Horrocks needs to put it in the rule book that it's not actually not allowed because at, at the moment doesn't doesn't even say that. So that that would be the first step, and then and then some introduction of testing certainly wouldn't hurt. Um, moving away from that, on the on the mindset side of things, I ask a lot of people like where their mindset goes in the race when things are getting really tough. What do you, what do you think about? Um, when things are getting tough, when I'm dying, I just really think about like like you need to be smart, like you need to have planned. Um, with like planned rest times basically, and it's not like like moving rest times. So like, see for instance, what I said about the buffies are like that. That was that was unplanned to be fair, but like I, in my head at the time, I was like, right, I'm gonna need to just kneel, step, jump, try and get a, some kind of recovery here. Um, but that's the main thing for me because you need to be smart rather than thinking like I just need to go hard here because you're you're never gonna get recovery like on the next station or the next station unless you take at least half a station, if not a full station for some form of recovery. Um, but as opposed to mindset, I think you really just need to dig deep sometimes and just tell yourself you've got more in the tank than what you think you have. And then I think when you're when you're racing other guys at that level, that kind of brings that out, out in you as well. So for me, when I was watching guys that are like, like Hunter, he's Latin guys in this field. This Elite 15, he's Latin every single one he is. I'm going, no, there's more, there's more in the tank. You've got to just keep going. There's more in the tank. Yeah, yeah. It's like David Goggins. Like most people are only operating at forty percent. Like when you think you're done, you're at forty percent. Um, yeah. And I heard, I can't even remember where it was. A, po- a podcast I was listening to recently, where like, you know, it's easy to feel like you're almost at your your ceiling, at your potential, and then you look at what someone like Hunter has done sit in the time that they've been in high rocks, and they've knocked whatever five, six, seven minutes off of their own time. When they're already amazing athletes, so I, I I agree. Like looking at people like that and seeing what they've been able to achieve, um, yeah, sort of recalibrates, if you like, your your, your own mind. It's tiring, um, really, because you get you go like for me, I look at like guys like and um, people who have better times than me and go like if they can get there, then so can I. So can anybody really. If you want to put in the work, you can get there. You just need to be smart and you need to have a plan in place. <laughs> On that on that subject, what do you think is possible for you in the upcoming season? What 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 is your aim now? You've finished fifth. Presumably, you want to, you know, whatever top three. What, what is it? Ideally, ideally, it would be top three. Like I'm looking to get like run about 55, 56 minutes this season, and I think if you get there, you're pretty secure. There's no going to be that many athletes hitting like those numbers those times. Mm-hmm. Um, so if I can get that and maybe Poland, I'd be happy, but. As I say, I'm just going to go here. See, like I'm going to go hard as well, but I'm just wanting to see where I'm actually sitting in race terms. And I know every course is different, but you can roughly get a feel on how things are feeling at the time. Mm-hmm. And so, if you've if you've qualified for the majors when they come around, will you compete in those? Like, will you go to Chicago, for example? I'll go to Chicago. I'll probably leave Washington, but I'll go to Chicago and I'll go to the rest of the majors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. You've you've got your own gym, right? Mm-hmm. Is Hyrox affiliated? Is it? It isn't yet, but I think I'm going to go and get it um, affiliated with Hyrox. Okay. okay. I don't know why I've never done it yet, because <laughs> that's kind of the way we train. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that presumably even just you being in Hyrox? Is that attracting new members? Is that what a lot of the members ha- how they want to train now? Yeah, definitely, that's like it's like one of our biggest like selling points. With me being being in high rocks and then plus a couple of guys have good times and stuff like that from the gym, so it's good. Yeah. It's good to have that. Community. Can you see can you see like from, from your perspective of like as a gym owner, can you see the sport continuing to grow? Do you think it's just gonna to continue to expand from here? It's gonna blow up, to be honest, like go like really big. I think yeah. it's gonna take over. Definitely. Yeah. Past CrossFit, do you reckon? I think so. Because it's got like it's got, it's so accessible for like so many people. Like just the the average Joe in the street. I mean, yeah. like CrossFit's like a level. Like to be in CrossFit, you've got to be like a, a certain level of athlete. Whereas in High Rocks, anybody can come in and compete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is a what is your off season look like? Have you, you know, is it still very High Rocksy, or have you been doing triathlons or anything like that? 
Nah, I've been off. Uh, nah, just been running really. That's been the main thing. Um, one swim session a week, and then running. At the first, even um, when the elite fifteen finished, I kind of went through like a a strength block for like eight weeks, and it was like it was still full body work, but it was like full body squat, bench, pull ups on a Monday, and then Tuesday I would go deadlifts, cleans, snatches, and kind of play about arms stuff like that. Kind of like bodybuilding, but with some skill work in it. And then Wednesday, we always just go for a partner workout. So it's like an I go, you go workout. And that keeps a bit of intensity. And then Thursday, we just cycled back to the Monday and then Friday, Tuesday again. Good. And then Saturday, we kept in the long run. But on top of that, I'm still running as well. But I think I took like six weeks off, like properly, like intense running. And then I've just started bringing it back. Just so no, no, no competitions or anything like that you've been doing? Um, I've done folders at the weekend. I, ended up, I got subbed in for Team My Zone, just done it there. Okay. Um, good event to be fair it was pretty good um, okay. teams at six I think we came fourth um, to be fair it was like a team that was put together like very very last minute I got a call up on I think it was Thursday or Friday to go and compete on the Sunday to help them out and then somebody pulled out pulled out on the day so but it would end up it was a good team good bunch of guys and fourth we'll take that nice nice um, what shoe are you playing in on wearing in Poland Poland. I'm going to try out the Puma DV8 Nitro Twos. So I've never used these before, but I used them in a I used them in a session. But I've never used them like in, in competition, but I used them in a session yesterday, and they felt quite good. Bit different, but I may as well try different shoes out and then see what feels best. Because it's not as if like this is my biggest race, so I may as well try things here. Yeah, yeah. Funnily enough, I spoke to. Um... Yesterday, I spoke to Jake Williamson, who's going to be the episode before yours. And uh, I think uh, he's looking at a pair of Nikes, but I think the the, the, the Pumas as well are his, his choice at the moment. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they've got a carbon plate in them as well. So see how they are. Yeah. Um, was the World Championships your best sporting experience of your life or anything else spring to mind? I was probably the biggest um, sporting experience of my life, definitely. Yeah. Just being surrounded with that and like so many people watching you like that. And basically, you're, all, you're live like on YouTube and stuff like that. So it's good. It's amazing. Nice. Better than stepping on stage, bodybuilding, is it? Ah, oh, 10 times better. I would never go back to that. I'll be better. <laughs> yeah. Um, how about the toughest thing you've done in sport what's that in sport well I ran I ran 100k for charity so we'd done a big thing at the gym and there was like seven of us that ran 100k uh, at our gym and we had like so many people come and they would join in at certain parts of the run because we'd always circle back to the gym and like so many people would come to the gym do like 10ks 15ks even 30ks alongside us so probably that's about the hardest thing I've done is run 100k that's a it's not bad for a non-runner mate I know I just put myself in these situations but I'm focused on high rocks now so maybe I'll dabble into stuff like Ironmans and like longer endurance events like a couple of years down the line I don't know yeah um um how would you change the race to better suit you Um, well, I'd probably shorten the runs by 200 and then increase every machine by two, like, like so increase the ski by 200, increase the row by 200, basically increase everything by an extra either length or like if it's a sled's 10 to 20 metres, increase the rocks, decrease the runs by 200, 800s would be happy for me. Okay. Be good. Oh, yeah, makes sense. Um. Uh, I think you th- did you do the doubles at the World Championships as well? I done the doubles on the Saturday, so the Friday I done that, and then me and Hannah, my girlfriend, we done the doubles on the Saturday. How did that go? We got an hour in. We got an hour in one. One hour. One hour. One minute. You got more plans to do that this season? We'll do that as well. The main focus is always going to be the singles for each other, but um, well, I'll dabble in that as well. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do doubles with one of my clients, one of my pals as well. So we're looking to get a good time. He's like a good, a serious runner. So his downfall is his strength, but 
I'm sure we should still get maybe 50-ish minutes. Nice. In the different, it's a different event, isn't it? How, how, how do you feel about it? Do you, do you like it? or? You know, I quite like the doubles, but I've only done the doubles like with Hannah, so like when I'm going on the runs, like it feels like I'm getting full recovery, and then yeah. when I hit the machines, I'm hitting the machines hard, and um, so I get proper recovery. Whereas when I go at it by myself, I'm I'm dying like single. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> yeah, doesn't yeah. matter how fit you are, you're dying because it's like the hardest race ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, I've been asking everyone this at the end of the podcast recently, but if you if you could put a message out on a billboard for all the world to see, what would it say? Um, I would say, go after what you want. It's never too late until it's too late. <laughs> and what nice. I mean by that is, is like it's only too late when you're in your deathbed and you've left it too late. And that can go for every aspect of your life, relationships, fitness, careers, everything. Good shout. Nice. I like it. So what's your, so, so you're racing in Poland. Got nothing else booked after that? Um, I've got Poland and then I'm going to go to Madrid for the doubles, double, male doubles. And then... I've got Barcelona booked, but depending on the time that I get in Poland, I don't know if I'm a hundred percent in Barcelona yet. So I'll see if I'll just I'll wait and see, really. If I need to change things then I'll go and do Barcelona. Are you are you like tapering down much for for these races and then do you need a recovery afterwards or are you just like treating it as like part of your training? I'll taper down a bit. Like I'll usually take like from Monday to Friday to taper slightly and just kinda of dial down on things, but I'll probably taper from maybe Wednesday for Poland. Okay. Okay. And then will you, how, how do you feel after a high rocks? Are you? Usually about two, two to three days to come back like properly and starting to get like an early like, real sessions. Yeah. 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 What's your post race snack? Post race snack. It's usually always pizza, to be fair. Pizza. Yeah. yeah. Pizza nice and Nice twist. Nice. All right. Well, thank thank you for doing this. If uh, if people want to find out more about you, where should they go? Yeah, Alation Fitness Training. That's where they'll find me. Instagram, Facebook. Okay. All right. Perfect. Anything else I should have asked you? Anything else you want to talk about? Happy with that. I enjoyed right. that. Thanks All right. for having me. All right. Nice. Thank you. Good luck for the season. I will see you around and uh, yeah, talk again soon. Right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.